All right, Dave Irwin is a recreation lecturer at the Christchurch Polytechnic, and he is currently working on a PhD about weaving together sustainability and outdoor education. So I think you're all ready to go there. Uh, kia ora everybody and uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak. Uh, listening to the um, speakers about Eco My Flat reminded me of um, those touchstones as an educator about when your students have finally got it. And for me, bikes and beer is one of those touchstones. When you see the bicycle racks at the Polytech full of bikes and students holding parties where the only beer they're allowed to bring is in refillable containers, you know that they've got the, got the hook. Um, Susan introduced us as a community of heretics and um, it reminded me of Paul Hawkins' analysis that sustainability is the largest social movement that the human race has ever encountered. But social movements are about transformation, they're about political change and there's a political edge to them. And in the tertiary sector and, and in any formal education, um, that makes education for sustainability quite problematic because it creates conflicts with the agenda of the people that fund that education system. Before I begin, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about outdoor education. Um, it's got a long history in New Zealand and Pip Lynch sitting down here did her PhD on it, so I'm not going to try and replicate the complexity that she was able to. But essentially for me, it's about taking young people outdoors and having them explore their place in the world around them. Outdoor education is present in our schools from year one right the way through year 13. It's assessed um, in senior school and it's taught in many of the um, uh, tertiary sectors around the, uh, tertiary organisations around the country. Outdoor education and environmental education have a long um, uh, um, relationship together, um, and but up in the up in, oh, sorry through until the 1970s that was quite a mutual relationship. But then in the late 1970s, outdoor education tended to drift away from environmental education, and um, it sort of evolved into more of a focus around personal and group development particularly through adventurous pursuits, and we've seen some really tragic accidents uh, in outdoor education over the last few years. Environmental education it continued to move away and has morphed into education for sustainability and tends to occupy now the, the social studies and science um, areas of the curriculum. Over the last decade, however, there's been a, a bringing together of education for sustainability and outdoor education. And that's where I'd like to sort of move from. So, historically, our programs at CPIT um, have been delivered for around 10 years now, but they've got very expensive to deliver. So, our program was put under review. So, the graduate profile of our degree that we have been providing did not match with where our students were, were moving. So, 65% of them were moving on to teaching both primary and secondary. And this hadn't been anticipated in the early design of the degree. Um, there was also an increased interest in staff within our program in education for sustainability. And interestingly, the students themselves lobbied for a name change and a refocusing and positioning of the degree to better, better facilitate the acknowledgement of education for sustainability that was taking place. So like many people in the tertiary sector, we were placed under review. It lasted two and a half to three years. We're just coming out of it now. There were three significant pieces of research that were conducted, um, the first by Dr Barry Law, the second by Stu Allen, and the third by Jan Fitzgerald. Now there was a common th theme across all three pieces of research, and that was that the significant, op significant opportunities for our redevelopment lay in sustainability. An action research project was initiated within our program, and this action research is, is very important in the education sector to mobilise change because what it does is it allows a team of people to come together and explore different ideas. And a um, steering group and 
development team were pulled together. The focus on sustainability in the redevelopment occurred because of increased engagement with sustainability. Not the least was the development of the EFS achievement standards that sit within the science domain. There was increased staff and student engagement with education for sustainability and that was able to be tracked over time. Staff began to research education for sustainability both at masters and PhD level and there was increased institutional engagement with sustainability. It became part of the strategic um, aim of the organisation. There was also increased demand placed on the staff within our program to teach outside of outdoor education in the area of education for sustainability. So for example, we began to run staff development workshops and teach within the management degree at CPIT. So this is what the redevelopment portfolio looked like. There's a Bachelor of Sustainability in Outdoor Education. And the sustainability is about sustainability education. A graduate diploma in sustainability and outdoor education, a graduate certificate in environmental and outdoor leadership, a diploma in environmental and outdoor leadership, and a certificate in outdoor recreation. I'm going to focus on the degree. So these programs have been approved by um, the TEC um, and NZQA. It will begin delivery in 2011. The Bachelor of Sustainability in Outdoor Education weaves together outdoor education and sustainability education. The degree is about preparing students primarily to teach and it focuses not on just learning concepts but learning how to teach those concepts. <coughs> and it contextualises that learning in the outdoors which um, those of you who are educators in sustainability will recognise as being really important. Action um, projects are a really important part of the degree and these are based on um, you know, projects that uh, the students come up with themselves. If you trace through the matrix there, the green shaded um, courses create the sustainability major moving up through. So there's a social geography paper, an environmental science paper at year one, an environmental science paper at year two, and a systems approach to sustainability at year two, which focuses on overpopulation, species extinction, um, climate change, and so on. At level seven, which is the third uh, year, there's a sustainability project and a resource management paper that the students undertake. So the level six and level seven courses um, within the degree have been um, designed in conjunction with Otago Polytechnic and those courses will also be elective courses for the Bachelor of Applied Management which is now delivered at five institutions around the country. So within the institution of CPIT what we've tried to do is um, uh, create cross-curricular generic papers in sustainability that um, create an anchor point within the various degree programs that then allow outcomes to um, be diffused horizontally out through all of the other papers within a, within a course of study. So kia ora and thank you very much. And I'll just finish with a slide here.